Bueno, buenas tardes. Vamos a empezar la sesión con la, la presentación de Cristina Marcuso, que tengo el honor de, de introducir. Eh, Cristina Marcuso es profesora de la Universidad de Roma La Sapienza, eh, entre otras, entre otras este, posiciones, es miembro del directorio de la Sociedad Italiana de, de, de Economistas, presidente de la Sociedad Europea para la Historia del Pensamiento Económico, tiene numerosos, numerosas publicaciones sobre historia, sobre economía política, sobre historia del pensamiento económico, tiene este, premios como el premio por la, de, la, de la Sociedad de los Estados Unidos de Historia, de historia Económica por la mejor publicación de Historia Económica del año 94. Bueno, hay una extensa lista de publicaciones eh, sobre la obra de teoría económica y también sobre la obra de economistas como Pierre Trappa y también, por supuesto, de Keynes, de cuya obra nos va a hablar hoy. El, el trabajo que va a presentar se llama Replacing Keynes y, bueno, le agradecemos a Cristina su presencia aquí. Gracias, uh, Mario. Uh, my apologies for not speaking uh, Spanish. I should, even that I'm Italian, but uh, I promise next time I'll make an effort to speak your language. I, I do uh, thank the organizer of this uh, conference for inviting me. It is indeed a great pleasure. Uh, this is my first visit to Argentina, and I'm uh, encantada uh, by this country. So thank you very much for having me. Uh, I hope you enjoy my talk. So what I'm, uh, I'm doing in this paper, uh, I'm trying to look at the, the way in which reference to Keynes have been made in the media, in the press, and the political discourse in the aftermath of the crisis. And what I would like to do is to investigate which aspects of Keynes' analysis and recommendations economists wish to see accepted and implemented, and which are still rejected and misunderstood. And my second uh, aim in this paper is to find out whether the return to Keynes' plea is matched by original research in his work, and how much is rhetoric or relies on second uh, and knowledge. And I guess that my main point in addressing these issues is to, to say that in the face of unqualified admirers and skeptics alike, I think that scholarly investigations into Keynes' writing <coughs> more than ever is called for in order to take stock of his work in teaching. Uh, so what is the standard um, return to Keynes uh, argument? Uh, the, the standard argument, of course, is the need for fiscal stimulus to boost the economy from the recession. Uh, and the burden of the deficit is not seen as the main drawback of government intervention, but a necessary measure to address the failure of aggregate demand. Unfortunately, there are still many economists who oppose this view, and I've just given you three examples. One is the manifesto sponsored by the Cato Institute, to ensure that all of you know and it was signed by 237 American economists, some of them quite renowned, Gordo, Buchanan, Eugene Fama, McCloskey, even Braden McCloskey, I'm sorry to say, uh, Metzler, uh, Prescott, and so forth, who refused what they, the manifesto is a bit lengthy, but what is the main point? The point was to refuse to endorse the statement made by President Obama on the day and the word, word by Obama where we need action by our government and recovery plan that will end to jumpstart the economy. So the, the, the signatories were, these people made a strong uh, stance against uh, this, uh, this sentence. Uh, the second example I'm giving you is a letter to the Sunday Times in February. 2010, which went 
seat and go among them. I'm sorry to say another friend, my Kandesai, who was my supervisor of the LSE, when I saw him, I was very disappointed to see him signing this uh, letter, advocate, advocating more reduction of return margin deficit to support a sustainable recovery. These are the words they, they use, okay? And more recently, in October 2010, <coughs> the Chancellor of the Exchequer has declared that fiscal discipline is needed to take Britain off the road to ruin. This is the wording that was used. And of course, we have uh, uh, many other example, examples. Uh, every, uh, any of you is familiar with the fiscal debate and the fiscal stimulus de de debate on the Financial Times will uh, recognize that there are much more examples. So what are the uh, indicators and arguments? Okay, what are the arguments which have been used in opposing Keynesian policy? Again, just a couple of examples. One are the lessons from history. The lessons from history are the Hoover and Roosevelt did not pull the United States economy out of the Great Depression of the 1930s. And the other example which is being used uh, is that more government spending did not solve Japan's lost decade in the 90s. These are the lessons from the history. Uh, of course, we have uh, a montant, as you say, in, in, in Argentina. Our papers will show exactly the opposite. Very nice paper by Ku on Japan presented at the Soros Conference in Cambridge, in which it shows that the evidence is contrary. And of course, on um, economic history, we have plenty of evidence that these arguments are not as sound as they look. And then, of course, are lessons from theory. And lessons from theory are the growth depend on reforms that remove impediment to work, namely flexibility in the labor market is the main thing or lower taxes and, and of course competition. And I think most importantly, because it's very undecided, all these empirical, empirical studies on the size of the multiplier are very non they are very controversial. You know, we have the enormous number of studies who prove that the multiplier is large and some studies to prove that the multiplier is not very large. Anyway, in this argument, the, they say that the, the, the amount of empirical studies proving the case against Keynes is paramount. They leave to you to decide whether uh, What is the Keynesian? Notice that I'm using the word Keynesian, not Keynes. I'm using the word Keynesian. What is the Keynesian counter-argument? most importantly of all is the rejection of the claim that the public expenditure crowds out the corresponding amount of private expenditure. So it's against the crowding out effect or the treasury view effect. I think the second argument is more interesting and it is that there is no theory to justify the right size of deficit nor the amount of government spending. In other words, the numbers that are given what would be the right of the appropriate size of the deficit uh, is not clear. Of course, it has to be in an interval. Uh, the, the, the number must be in an interval. But so far, that's the Keynesian argument. It's not been given any theoretical justification of what would be the right size. Um, third argument. They will recognize the standard things and argument. Unemployment is basically due to insufficient effective demand, not to the GDP in prices and wages. Uh, this is an argument that, of course, um, is, is, is being repeated but not clearly uh, understood most of the time. Uh, and then we have uh, uh, a couple of arguments used by Keynesian to say that uh, the restricting the fiscal space, as in the European monetary system, imposes a deflationary bias, 
and the crisis in the United States is seen also as a problem of distribution of income, uh, namely in private debt, which has increased to offset the falling in salaries. So these are, I'm not obviously presenting all the arguments that have been given in this controversy, but I've just uh, uh, picked up those who, uh, which I thought were more interesting or more typical of the kind of argument. So we are back in the in the in the seventies. You know, we're back in the seventies when you know, the Keynesian and the Methodists were arguing, and at the time the question was whether the elasticity of the IS was such and such, or the elasticity of the LM was such and such. And uh, the debate yeah. remains nowadays as inconclusive as it was in the seventies. I didn't see many people cross over from one side. Uh, I think that uh, an interesting point has been made by Samuel Britton in a recent uh, issue of the Financial Times, in which he said at the end of this debate, which I'm sure most of you have seen on Financial Times, that the, the debate has been impoverished. And in fact, what he argues that there are two schools of thought uh, uh, one gives priority to eliminating current deficit and developing expenditure. <coughs> the other one is uh, arguing in favor of protecting public services at the cost of the lower production. According to Britain, there is a confusion between views on public spending and views on the role of the budget balance in macroeconomic policy. And in fact, he listed logically four and uh, two positions. One is reduced deficit of spending, the other is reduced deficit but keep a high proportion of public spending. And he of course attributes this position to different part of the political scenery in, in the in UK, whether it's left labor or not. Uh, the other position is no urgency to cut deficit and public spending. Sorry, there is some typos. Uh, no urgency to cut deficit or lower public expenditure and taxes. Uh, so I think this um, this discussion shows how all this return to Keynes and business is understood in, term, in the size of deficit and whether or not we should go back to some kind of uh, reduced reduction in public expenditure. Another interesting point I thought was made by Paul Krugman, the New York Times, November 3rd, in which he said, again, the, there is a Bulgata here, something that is not, is not exactly good. The Bulgata is the American one for the Kingdom policy, Germany chose austerity, and Germany did better. Uh, and his point, I'm using his own graph, is that Germany GDP did not do better. And in fact, uh, who are the people who are the ones? The actual government purchasing food and services in Germany is higher. So Germany is more capable than the United States. So, whether you do it uh, in terms of uh, ideology, you do it in terms of policies, you do it in terms of theory, you do it in terms of facts, there is no way in which the, these two sides can be reconciled, okay? The Keynesians and the others. Here I had a very interesting picture, which unfortunately I'm unable to show, not on my fault, or because for some reason the program uh, not running in this computer. I had a nice picture of Keynes and some shadows of Keynes behind it. So the point I was making, we're we talking here, we're talking about the shadows of Keynes. We're not talking about Keynes. And that was a nice picture, which took me quite a while to find, but um, mm. unfortunately, I cannot show it. So there, may, there must be some, some anti-Keynesian here. <laughs> <laughs> Being boy A lot of people. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. So the point is that why <coughs> rather than you know arguing with anti-Keynesian and Keynesians, namely with the shadows of Keynes, why we don't go back to real Keynes and try to see uh, what um, what is the uh, the point which I think 
is being made. Okay, so uh, I think his, his case original arguments have seldom be reappraised with notably exceptions. Some people in the front row. Uh, some people have, have done uh, excellent work, but most of, of what goes under Keynesian argument is not Keynes. It's just sort of shadow of Keynes. So let me try to, to list what I consider to be Keynes' argument, which are worth going back to as opposed uh, to the so called Keynes, Keynes argument. I think the first point is, is the tenet against traditional thinking. Keynes, the main point is to form opinion, to change traditional thinking, and what is the traditional thinking? Is the relation, causality relation between deficit, budgeting, level of income, international competence in the country. So what Keynes teaches us is to change the way in which we believe the, the causal sequence, obviously, uh, and, and should be possible. Uh, second, Second point, which I think is, is very much into, uh, has to be reappraised, is public expenditure as a means to reduce employment is not the same as to just supply to the existing okay. Okay. So this is the, uh, the, 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 second, the second point which I think is very important. And uh, the digging holes in the ground argument is to illustrate the principle not to provide a blueprint for useful public work schemes. So here, I mean, uh, the digging in the whole argument has always been used as, as a mockery, you know, the idea that Keynes is about wasting resources because what he comes up with, the, the idea that you dig all in order to, uh, to increase demand. I think that the use of paradox in Keynes is very important, and the point is he's, he's making is really worth reconsidering with, with little more care than it usually is done. Uh, so the point is that expenditure of goods which have no useful purposes from the point of view of consumption and may produce effect on the income and employment. So I'm giving you uh, two very nice quotations from Keynes, which I'm sure uh, you will recognize. Gold mining, which is just another form of an earthen bottle that in the ground of pyramid building, had positive effects on income and employment because they yielded fruits that could not serve the needs of men by being consumed, and therefore not stay with abundance. Expenditure is limited because of decreasing of marginal efficient investment or marginal utility of this crop. So the importance of public expenditure and uh, the importance of uh, increased aggregate demand is seen by Keynes in a way which illustrates the territory this point against uh, uh, the okay. So let me very quickly go back to the main point. The main point being uh, that this crisis has been repeated by many people, but with different recipes of how to uh, react to this. Many people have seen this, the present crisis not just a failure of markets, but a failure of ideas. Okay. This has been repeated, it's been said everywhere. Uh, and people have reacted to this, tried to counteract suggestions which are the line of research in which we should be going in order to, uh, to solve the problems. Uh, let me just uh, give you a couple of, uh, of examples of what people have said uh, uh, of the reason of this failure of some idea. One, is that modern macroeconomics deals with godlike features. They know the statistical distribution of all the shocks that can hit the economy. As a result, they can make scientifically founded pluralistic states with about computer shocks. This is one of the charges against macroeconomics, which has been repeated. This is the, the drawer of the quotation from that. We have many 
of these people who have insisted that the main failure, failure of present macroeconomics is to be attributed to the use of risk and And uh, the other main charge which has been uh, raised is that the assumption of rational expectation in the future market has created an intellectual framework in the private economy for the policy market, preventing them from seeing the problem of the damage that is created for systemic stability. So the question is whether from these failures of idea, you know, Keynes is or is not perceived as someone who can uh, redress this issue in a way that doesn't have uh, the figure that I indicated here. Um, so the point is that uh, rather than going back to the things of uh, the stimulus debate, I think that uh, we might be better to get back to another case, or the real case, not the shared case. And the Keynes, in particular, who force us to take on board a division of economics between, and I'm quoting from the general, uh, general theory, is to take on board the idea that um, economics can be divided between the study of those economic activities in which our views of the future are reliable and the study of those which our previous expectation are liable to disappointment and expectation concerning the future effect that we need to do today. And so the return to another case, and this is one line of thinking which has been very cheaper from people, from scholars of Keynes, as opposed to Keynesians, and I'm thinking of of course, uh, people started from Skidesky. I think people associated with Minsky, Jan Greger, you know, people who are serious scholars of things have insisted that this is the kind of case we, we should uh, really consider. And uh, uh, I, I think that it's important to understand what exactly is this notion of uncertainty to consider the Keynesian scholars of things consider really relevant in, uh, uh, in the present circumstances. Uh, this is linked with uh, Keynes' idea of probability okay. and the probability, uh, as it is well known, in Keynes, uh, for Keynes scholars, is a, uh, is a rational belief in the conclusion from the knowledge of the premise. The weight of the argument expresses the confidence in that probability. So what is uncertainty? Certainty is a lack of a probability. Uh, sorry, there is again a typo. Uncertainty is lack of a probability relationship. And when does it apply? When does it apply this notion of uh, uncertainty as lack of probability relationship? Uh, it applies in cases in which against it, no rational basis has been discovered for numerical comparison. It is not the case here that the method of calculation prescribed by theory is beyond our powers or too laborious for rational calculation. So I think that people who have been uh, insisted on case, notion of uncertainty, have uh, rightly uh, focused the attention on the relationship between the case and the probability as it was developed in this Theory. So basically, the idea that Keynes rejected the position that risk can be mentioned and allocated in such a way as to look at uncertainty. I think that on the discovery of risk, it was building on this intuition that risk is different from Keynes. Now, uh, to these failures of idea, uh, people have reacted, not turned to Keynes. They have been critical of the mainstream economics of the standard macro, but they have said that things might not be uh, the, the recipe to, to address the situation. And 
here I have a, an example. Okay, Blanchard would consider himself Keynesian. And in this, in, in this paper, if you remember the one who said the state of macro is good, uh, uh, he claims that, okay, there are problems in macroeconomics, but they can be fixed. And how can they be fixed? By introducing a more sophisticated explanation of the real or nominal rate rigidities. Well, I leave it to you to consider whether this is a real thing to but to my mind, it doesn't seem to be the right start. Then we have the Darwin Report, again signed by a bunch of people, I have the list here, but you might uh, uh, know people like Hollander, Zellius, uh, Alan Hirman, amongst them, which I consider to be perhaps the most interesting of them. And what they think? Well, they think that the, 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 the strategy should be to develop a research program based on equal analysis with information on financial prices and financial contracts, indicator, what is the bubble foundation again. Boiter. Boiter again is considered to be a Keynesian, and the stress is on behavioral empirical study that show how participants learn and so on. So my conclusion on this aspect, and I'm getting closer to the end, is that the return to Keynes in most of this recent literature is a left deep service uh, with very little original work done on those aspects of Keynes which are relevant to the present session of economic. And I think uh, that the return to Keynes should be about other things apart from government spending and budgeting, and this should be also international cooperation on finance, primary economic international spending, coordination of rules in market behavior, provide the rationality and unreasonableness. I use this word, which was used by Keynes quite often to contrast the media of rationality with uh, I insist that case is also about rational behavior and uncertainty. It's not just about her behavior, animal spirits, it's rationality and bubbles. It's also about rationality, which is bounded by knowledge, judgment, and experience. So from case, we can learn also the positive side of the analysis, it's not just the idea that everything is rational, is bubble. And I think that after all the killer book, in this respect, tend to stress too much part of Keynes that is about irrationality. Keynes is also about rational behavior. Otherwise, there would be no policy, no economics. One of the legacy of Keynes is precisely to give us the idea that we can do something, that there is scope for policy, there is scope for intervention, there is scope for rules. And this requires that we go back to the idea of some kind of rationality but bound by knowledge, judgment, and experience. And I think that the drivers of research agenda, as far as I'm concerned, are in finance, to build um, Keynes insight. Very nice work has been done here by two Keynes scholars, like uh, Jan Kreger, Marcello Pacheco. If I can make a little publicity of a book I just edited, in which Jan has a very nice paper, Pacheco, it's called The Return to Keynes, edited by Harvard University Press, 2009. Makes an excellent Christmas present, right? And uh, the second, uh, the second, uh, so it's one is finance. This is work that has been done that shows how case insights are very interesting, and uh, that's it was going back to that kind. Of, and of course, <coughs> institutional reforms. Here I have uh, particularly done work myself with a group of people at the University of Italy in which we have done work on Keynes as a speculator, Keynes as a uh, scholar of um, institutional reform, in particular on commodity prices, and particularly on buffer stocks. And this is an area which is fascinating, and, and I think this is not just uh, the game that is made. So, getting to the end, let's uh, return to Keynes is why range of are not simple minded to Three broad lessons notion of uncertainty, the economy cannot be managed, universal human behavior does not guarantee a state of economic order. The question is whether, since 
uh, so-called admirers of Keynes uh, will or will not persuade the uh, skeptics and all that. Okay? And my feeling is that this is uh, not happening. Admirer of Keynes has not persuaded, has not been very persuaded. So my conclusion is that um, Max Planck, a new scientific truth does not try to convince his opponent and make it very in their life, but rather because his opponent eventually die and a new generation grows up that familiar with it. I'm not wishing anyone bad luck, <laughs> but I'm just saying that perhaps, and I hope the young people here, next generation, will do better than the present one. Thank you very much. Lecture. Uh, you mentioned that it's uh, very important to return to international global, sorry, international uh, commerce cooperation. Uh, it was in the 50s. But you later mentioned that it's important to regulate, for example, commodity markets. Uh, uh, if, <laughs> sorry, isn't there a contradiction between these, these points? Well, uh, what I had in mind in particular was a scheme that was put forward by Keynes originally in an article in 1938, and then it was uh, later uh, presented in, 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 during the 40s. He had a few versions of the same scheme, which was called the Commod scheme. And the idea is that uh, as we have uh, a cooperation in terms of finance, in terms of uh, regulation of international payment, we should also have an organism supervising supervising uh, prices of uh, primary commodities. And this scheme was a buffer spot scheme that Keynes left not so much uh, de detailed form, but then it was taken up by Richard Kant, and he presented to which much more clear um, details and the basic idea in this scheme is that uh, this international organism should be a speculator in the public interest. The idea is that they should uh, should have an organism that makes sure that prices that are before that the game are not reaped by the private speculator, but I reap also by the government that this organism. And uh, Keynes became very concerned of the stabilization of commodity prices. And this buffer scheme had a very brief life in, uh, in the 70s. I think there was the Bellagio conference in which Nicky Caldor attended and, and they tried to make a little bit more uh, advance of this. The FAO was interested, but uh, the scheme in the end uh, didn't develop. We had just cartels, we had just have uh, uh, which was not what Keynes had in mind. It was not a card, there was not a restriction or quota system. It was just an international organism who would try to edge and, uh, and, and stabilize commodity prices. And I must say, with the recent happenings with commodity prices, I think that uh, Keynes' relevance on this matter is particularly uh, topical. You mentioned that there is no theory to say how much, uh, say how much government, government spending is good for economics. And I was just curious, I've seen, like, there has been research done on that, though. There might not be a theory, but isn't there like an idea that makes sense? Well, I mean, it would be difficult now to say that Ireland, 
doesn't have a problem. Like Greece didn't have a problem. That Portugal did not have a problem. So we're not saying, you know, that huge deficit are not causing a problem, right? I'm not saying that uh, everything is fine, that we should go on, that Ireland and Greece and everybody should go on to observe. What I'm saying that in theoretical argument, you know, like it, when it when it came to the uh, uh, to the theoretical argument. It's not necessarily clear what is the, the amount of deficit, deficit that is considered to be optimal. There, are, there have been studies on that, but I think that as in the size of the of the multiplier of public spending, you have uh, very very controversial evidence. Okay, so there's nothing that is that is so clear cut. Uh, empirical study that has to prove one case against it to another. I'm not that familiar with that literature on the size of deficit, but I'm familiar with the literature on the size of the budget of the public spending multiplier. It is very, very divided, very, very divided. You can, I have a, a, a table in the paper in which I compare different sizes of multiplier this and that. You have a variety of results, very important. Si no hay más preguntas, cerramos la sesión y agradecemos a Cristina su...